The next thing I want to introduce to everyone is the read file and variable node. This node will help you read data from a file, such as a .txt file, or read data from a variable, and then split the data in that variable into parts using a delimiter. For example, here I will demonstrate reading a file. I will attach a file path here, which is the path to that file. You can get the file path from a variable, or you can choose it directly from your computer. For example, here I have a file, let's say a MetaMask file, I will attach its path here. In this part, there are currently two modes, line by line and line by line with delimiter. So what is line by line? Line by line will read all the lines in the file and separate them by a comma. For example, when it reads my file line by line, it reads everything, and each line is separated by a comma. So how can it read one line among many lines in my file? I will use the line by line with delimiter function. For example, I set the delimiter as a space. A delimiter is understood as the separator between the data you need to split. For example, here I set it as a space. It will understand that my line break is the separator when I run it. It will take the data from the first line. This is the first line's data. When I click on random, it will randomly select one of the lines in my file. Now I will run it. This is the second line. Run. It randomly selects the second line. The fourth line. That's random. As for the delimiter, after reading that line, it will delete that line from my .txt file. Now I have a line with three pieces of data, the first being the profile name. In between these two vertical bars, I have the key, the 12-word security phrase for MetaMask. And finally, the wallet address. So how do I split the data into separate variables? I will show you. In this delimiter part, when my file separates parts by vertical bars, I enter the vertical bar here. And when there is a delimiter, you will need to map the values, meaning you have to assign which data goes into which variable. And ordering by index, meaning sorting by order. First is the profile name. I will create a variable named profile name. First that, second is the key, I choose the key variable. And third is the wallet address, I will split it into the wallet address variable. Now, when it reads a line in my file, and that line is separated by vertical bars, it will automatically split the three pieces of data between the vertical bars into the variables respectively from left to right as shown here. Now I will run it. Now, its output variable is not a wallet variable anymore, but it splits into the three variables I set up from left to right, profile name variable, wallet address variable, and key variable. See, key variable, that's how the read file node works. It helps you read random lines in a file or read sequentially. If you read sequentially, you will check the delete line after reading box. After reading the first line, it will delete it. And when you run it again, the second line will take the first position, right? It will read the second line and similarly split it according to the vertical bar separator. That's the read file node. Next, the profile. This is the opposite of the previous node. It will help you write to a file. Usually, the profile node is used with a.txt file. For example, I choose the file path of the initial file. And I choose the input data, which is the content I want to write to the file. I can enter fixed content. When I enter fixed content here, it will be written directly to the file, or I enter variable content. For example, I enter the phone number and address variables. Here, when it runs, it will take the data from the address variable and write it to the file. Select file type, which is the type of file you need to write to. Usually, you will use a.txt file mainly, so I will talk about .txt. When you choose a.txt file, there are two modes for writing. First is override, which will overwrite the existing data. For example, if the file already has data, when you run this node and choose the override mode, 
When you run this node and choose the override mode, it will delete the old data and write the new data. When you choose a pinned, there are two more options. It will keep the old values in the file if the file has existing values, and it will make a new line. When you choose new line, it will go to a new line and write the value you entered here. And the delimiter, if you do not set a delimiter, it defaults to a comma. After all the existing data, it adds a comma and writes the next value. You can enter a vertical bar or any delimiter you want. These are the modes when writing to a.txt file using the write file node. The next node I will introduce to you is OpenAI. OpenAI is a node that allows you to interact directly with the artificial intelligence ChatGPT without having to access its website to ask questions or make requests. Here, I will use an API key. Please note that the API key for this OpenAI node is different from using ChatGPT on the website because you will have to pay an additional fee to get this API key, and each time you request using the OpenAI node, it will deduct money from your account balance. Even though you have paid for using ChatGPT, you still need to top up your OpenAI account to use it. To use it, go to the OpenAI platform. On the left is the regular chat GPT. It's the web where you can uses. ask questions and do things on it. On the right side is the API to get the API key. Please note that you need to have a balance. That means you need to add money to pay for your requests. I have tabs here. And I will go to the API key section. In the API key section, you need to create a new secret key. Name it as you like. Okay, I will create a key. Then I copy this key and put it into the OpenAI node. This is the key you use to make requests to ChatGPT to answer your questions. Directly within the script, no need to open the website anymore. So that's the API key, put your key in here. In the output type section, you can choose whether the response will be text or image. For text, you have two models, GPT 3.5 and GPT 4.0. You can choose. GPT 4.0 is slightly more expensive than GPT 3.5. Each request costs around a few cents, you can check it out. Go to its policy section to see the costs. You can choose between GPT 3.5 and GPT 4.0. For the image section, the model is DALL-E. You will enter the content here. Content and text or image is the same, it's your request. For example, show me a picture of a tree. It will receive this request and create an image for you. Then, choose the image size. Here are the available sizes. And for the output format of the image, it can return as URL or Base64. It's up to you which one you need. If URL, you need to choose a variable. Base64 as well, it will return the output to the chosen variable. Text is simpler, just give it a command and it will respond. The response will be saved to a variable, you choose the variable in the output section. Please note. Another note is when using the model, for example, 3.5, 3.5 may be a bit slow. The response or command may be too long. ChatGPT takes longer to process. To give you the result, go to the settings. 
the default timeout is 30 seconds. However, in some cases, the command is too complicated. Within 30 seconds, it can't process your command and provide a response. You need to increase the timeout. For example, if it's too long, set the timeout to 120 seconds. 120 seconds for it to have time to generate a response and return the variable reasonably. If ChatGPT hasn't responded within 30 seconds, it will appear as a fail. Fail and move to the next node without the response variable. That's a note for using OpenAI. ChatGPT 4 is quite fast. ChatGPT 3.5 may be a bit slow. Just keep that in mind when running the OpenAI node.